There we go. I forgot that guy's name last video. It's like, who's the guy that sings? Wouldn't you like to be my neighbor? I forgot it was Mr. Rogers. I got a lot of hell from that from people, but sorry I forgot that guy's name. It's kind of a creepy show, wasn't it? It's like an adult man that was acting like that, and he spent his whole day talking to puppets. Hi, boys and girls. Hi. <laughs> it's creepy. Creepy. Creepy show. Um, I was going to talk about the sublime truth of uh, monistic metaphysics, how it's uh, kind of the opposite of everything we all grew up to believe to be the only two things that there were. And I know you were taught this growing up, at least 99% of you were. And once again, okay, I don't tell anybody what to do to, or what to think or what to believe. I just don't care what people believe. Uh, you know, anybody that, because wisdom is its own reward. What anybody thinks, feels, or believes is not only no concern of mine, I couldn't care less. Anybody that, by definition, wants to convince other people of something or wants to convert them, or they are by definition evil. Because wisdom is its own reward. What other people do or think is not a concern at all to anybody that has any wisdom whatsoever. So that's an important point to make before discussing this video. I want to talk about I spent most of my life in search of the sublime truth, and the sublime truth, I mean the metaphysical substrate or the foundation that holds up ultimate reality. You know, if I kick the bucket tomorrow for whatever reason, you know, have a heart attack, whatever, I can at least say I'm the first, uh, you know, human being on this planet to figure out magnetism, and that's true. And I love it, and I laugh when other people say, oh, you weren't the first to figure that out. And it's like, yeah, I was. Tesla never explained magnetism, neither did Faraday, Steinmetz, Heaviside, or James Cook Maxwell. They no way, no shape, or no form ever did that. I was the first person, so I'm very glad that I accomplished that. But even above that, and of course everything is tied together, just like physics and metaphysics are not two things. They're both part of the same silver that makes up the coinage. Um, I've always known that the sublime truth, truth, I said truth there for a second, Sublime, sublime truth. Hello, there we go. Not truth, truth. Sublime truth was something always opposite to belief systems and dogma and uh, rel religions and belief systems are the same thing, of course. And the opposite of that, and the opposite of that is uh, not atheism, which is incorrectly uh, connoted in the minds of current people today. They think atheism means the denial of God. It doesn't mean that. Current connotation means that, but that's actually not the definition of atheism at all. First use of atheism, Athios and Philibus 29d, uh, was not about the denial of God or gods. It was actually a denial about ontological substrates. In other words, a foundation as the basis for all things. This specifically is called metaphysical atheism. By the way, the only true atheism, it's not my opinion, it's a fact, it's called metaphysical atheism. You could actually look this up. We're just leaving God out of the picture completely, not even talking about God or gods, okay? Uh, a true atheist, by original definition, was a person that denied um, the hand underneath the sock puppet, if you will. It denied, you know, uh, uh, believed in phenomena but not noumena. You know, it believed in... Uh, uh, believed in atoms and bumping particles, but not the speed of the sanctum or the ether or anything underneath phenomena. And that, of course, and I find this hilarious about atheists. I'm not attacking atheists because I don't care about either side. I really don't give a hoot and heck about either side. What is hilarious about that is that they'll actually point out the absurdities. You know, I'm pretending to be an atheist, right? They'll point out the absurdities in belief systems, which, of course, they're correct on that. Just completely absurdity after another. But they themselves believe in absurdities way more inflated, way more astronomically insane than anything that they're accusing other people of believing in. Because fundamentally, a true metaphysical atheist is of the belief, and this is no exaggeration, that if you stick a hundred monkeys in a room with a hundred typewriters and let them pound and poop on them for a billion years, that those crazy monkeys pounding on typewriters will produce, ultimately, 
like a 12 volume set of Shakespearean literature, which we all both know is that completely impossible. And uh, there's an old joke about uh, the first prayer of an atheist about uh, energy, because you ask, just like a scientist, and these scientists are atheists by definition, they're atomists, because a true metaphysical atheist is, not my opinion, in fact, an atomist. Their first prayer, not that they pray, but they really do. Their first prayer is, uh, you know, nihil ex nihilo, from, from nothing comes nothing. So you have to have something to manifest before you can even have atoms. This is the prayer of a true atheist or an atomist, which there's no distinction, a true atheist, by the way, is, oh, God grants us this one miracle. <laughs> the first miracle, the first prayer of any true atomist or an atheist is for something to be present to make all these things that they believe in. We know which are bumping atoms, bumping particles. So their first prayer is, oh, God grants us this one miracle. <laughs> That's humorous, but it's also true. The absurdities of this belief system are astronomically absurd. And by the way, you can look that up. It's called metaphysical atheism, which is what a true atheist is. We're not even talking about God and no gods or anything like that. That confuses atheists. What are you? Is an atheist? It's like, hey, we don't have to talk about God. Let's just talk about true atheism. It's like, well, I thought God was about denying. Well, first you have to posit something, by the way, before you can negate it. So every atheist, a, a, a connotative atheist, who just sits there and, you know, flings insults at belief systems of other religions, you know, they, just, they will. They'll actually talk about the absurdities of uh, these belief systems. And they're right in doing that. But it's like pointing out the splinter in someone else's eye when you can't see the log in your own eye. And boy, oh boy, they have a huge log in their eye. Huge, huge log. And I'm not actually attacking atheists. I really don't care what any of them believe, one side or the other. I don't. The sublime truth is completely opposite to both because on one side you have these atomistic atheists that literally say a prayer, almost literally. They'll never, ever admit that in public. But their first and only prayer is, oh, please, grant us this one miracle. And also, too, I find it uh, very funny that these famous atheists, well, where did life come from? I mean, it's just completely impossible for random happens. What they'll call it is, they'll say, well, it's transpermia, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, living cells were carried on uh, meteorites that collided with Earth, and that was like the seed the seed start for life. It's like, well, then all you've done is display, f displace the answering of the complexity of life for even a single-celled organism from one planet to another. So you, what you did is you dismissed explaining life on Earth by saying it came from life from somewhere else. But then what we need to do is we need to go from that somewhere else and try to explain it there. And they can't explain it anywhere. So they themselves have all these really really, really hyperbolic belief systems, specifically also, too, you know, explaining nihil ex nihilo. From them, I mean, you have to say, even the people that believe only in atoms, the cult of bumping particles, as I call it, which is what it is, is that you have to explain away nihil ex nihilo. They have to spontaneously answer, well, since we've dismissed God, which is okay, we dismiss that guy up in the clouds, you know, the guy with the gray beard up in the clouds, but now we have to come up with energy! that makes up all these atoms that we believe in, you know, because we're, we're the cult of bumping particles. So <laughs> they have to invent energy. But not only can they not even tell you what energy is, by the way, no branch of science, ever to find a field or what energy is. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. You know, you don't know, that's all right. But they can't even come up with energy. It is like, oh, please, grant us this one miracle, oh, dear God, let there be energy. Then if we got energy, then we can have atoms. But the energy has to come from somewhere, you know, nihil ex nihilo, from nothing comes nothing. It's like, what cosmic fart, you know, manifested, <laughs> manifested energy for there to be to these atoms that will bump together and collide and eventually make, a you know, more atoms and more complex atoms and eventually molecules and more complex molecules. And then if you have a molecule that's complex enough, then voila, you got life. That's how they explain it. But we can't. We don't know where the energy came from. It just came from nowhere. But nothing comes from nothing. See, they can't explain anything. They literally are the belief system that they're always pointing the finger at religions. for Your belief system, you believe in crazy stuff. But you yourself are a belief system. 
because you work your way back to before atoms we have to manifest energy but you can't manifest energy out of nothing and these people of course I don't care if they don't believe in the ether but they don't which is fine don't care It's like well you can't manifest out of nothing energy you say well the universe well, there's a big bang okay Big Bang is a release of energy. It's right, it's right, it's right. It's a release of major amounts of energy. Okay, okay, let's run with that. Let's run with that. Let's run with that. Where did the energy come from? Well, we don't know that. What is energy? Well, we don't know that either. Okay. So first there had to be something before a Big Bang, because the Big Bang... There was no Big Bang, by the way, from the premise of monistic metaphysics. completely illogical. But that's a matter for another discussion in a video. I said, well, what, what was there before this? We're talking about an enormous release of energy before there was anything at all. It was just eventually it was nothing, and then there was a big bang, and we don't know what caused it, and we don't know how it came from. But all of a sudden, everything came from nothing. Well, that sounds like a religion. You're basically uh, transplanting the word God for a cosmic fart, i.e. big bang. You replace God with cosmic fart, and you manifested energy out of nothing. Yes, 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 yes. That's well. That's that's just that's just another belief system. So I've always known that these two branches of ridiculousness were just flip sides of the same coin. The real truth is right here on the edge. It's not the air. It's not there. Uh, the only uh, true metaphysics that's explained this, and there are a few different faces of it, but they're explaining the same thing because nothing is known except to the modality of the knower, is monistic metaphysics, i.e. the Upanishads, Advar Vedanta, whether that be Sankara or original. And I stress the word original Buddhism, and no, I'm not a Buddhist, because the term Buddhist and Buddhism didn't even come to lay way, way, way later. If I'd ever call myself anything, it'd be a Neoplatonic Platonist. You know, the Pythagoreans, the Platonists, specifically uh, the person that uh, condensed it into a singular entity of perfection, it would be that of Plotinus and the people that came after, like uh, Porphyry, not that great, his uh, disciple. Uh, Syrianus, Numenius, Iamblichus, uh, Simplicius, Demetius. Um, by the way, I've had a lot of people tell me that they started reading Plotinus, and their mind is so expanded and they think so much better and more clearly. I've had an enormous amount of people tell me they started reading the Pyrrhophysian by John Scotus Erigena, and oh my gosh, they see everything more clearly now. And as I told you that, yes, you would. You start reading the Pitophysian, you start reading the Aeneas of Plotinus, you'll understand so much more, you'll stay, understand things clearly. Um, these are the teachings of what is here, right along the edge. Not the teachings of this, and not the nonsense of that. They're both nonsense, actually. But the truth is sublime. It is not owned by a bunch of belief systems. It's not owned by a bunch of people that say that they're anti-belief systems, but they themselves are a bigger belief system. So we would just pray for this cosmic fart to happen so that energy would manifest, and then atoms would form, and then... <laughs> it's like you're just, a, you're just preaching a belief system. The only difference... And I love the way they rail against God, you know. It's so funny to confront, and I don't care what atheists believe, I don't care what anybody believes, confront an atheist. Like, you spend all your time ragging against God. Yeah, that's right, I'm an atheist. It's like, if you were halfway consistent with yourself, you wouldn't even care about ragging against something that you... It would be like someone venting their anger about unicorns. You'd be like, dude, why are you so angry about unicorns? You know, you don't think they... Why are you angry about something that you confess doesn't exist? That's ridiculous. It's like... Me getting angry about leprechauns raiding my refrigerator at night. It's like, well, that's a phantasm. Why would I get angry about something that's totally unreal, doesn't exist, and that I don't believe in? It's ridiculous. It's like, you made a religion. Yes, it is. You made a religion out of hating something and railing against something that you say doesn't exist, you don't believe in. Well, that's just... Talk about a waste of mental energy, mental and physical energy. Well, you know, it's what I believe. It is. It's a belief system. Because when you get down to it, they'll admit that they are, theirs is a belief system. Well, I believe. All the words that always follow after I believe, of course, are just nonsense. I believe. Do you believe? If you don't believe what I believe, then I don't like you anymore. Cause of all of 
most of human suffering. So, Anyway, I'm here to tell you, and I don't care what you believe me or not, I don't care what anybody believes, is that the sublime truth lays right here. It doesn't, it's not here, and it's not here. Because over here we have religions, beliefs, and dogma. And over here we have a funny, we have an anti-belief belief system. We have an anti-dogma system of dogma. <laughs> Which is what it is. It's atomism. It is a belief system of its own. But it paints itself as an anti-belief system. But what it really is, is an anti-belief belief system. And there is the real truth. And this is just another form of human ignorance and hypocrisy. Really, it's fundamentally a hypocrisy. But uh, that's a matter for another discussion. Wisdom is its own reward, kids. I tell you one thing right now with all my heart and soul, that the sublime truth is right here. It's not here and it's not here. I've known that most of my life. And that's why I've rejected all these belief systems. And I've rejected these anti-belief systems, which are also belief systems. <laughs> the sublime truth of monistic, platonic, Pythagorean monism has been the only accurate depiction of the nature of the universe. Okay? And I don't say that trying to convince you. I state it as a matter of fact. What people agree with or don't agree with, couldn't care less. Okay? Lux Iveritas, I hope you like these videos. Any donation is always kindly welcome. Or you can tell me how much you hate me. Whatever makes you happy. You know? Peace out, Girl Scout.